Hi, this is Gil Robles, and I'm back with another video. I am drawing on Leonardo. It's one of my favorite softwares, uh, and especially for sketching. I don't do a lot of uh, finished work on here, I, I even though I think I can as far as uh, any finished illustrations or anything like that. But it is a fun and, and easy application to do sketching. You know, sometimes I... Uh, after a long day, I might want to sit in front of my computer and just draw uh, in the same way that I do a sketchbook. You know, I just pull up a pencil and just start drawing, sketching, doodling, or using some sort of reference like I'm doing here. Uh, and as far as this uh, video, this drawing is concerned, I just want, uh, I just want to say, uh, just point out a few things as I start. Um, I spend a lot of time in these, uh, in this in this preliminary in this this uh, beginning stages um, because I believe that basically uh, the amount of time that you spend in preparation for what for, for the next parts uh, cuts down on, on um, a lot of the corrections that you have to do later I believe a, a drawing goes through a phase of uh, you prepare you 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 know by, by prepare I mean like you know you you put the, the the drawing down. You begin to put the drawing down on paper. You measure. You look for where things go, and and you go through a, a stage where you're just trying to place things in the right place and, and put things in the right place. And then you get to you get to the next stage, which is basically correcting your drawing. And then after the correction comes the refinement where you're, you're pretty confident where everything is. When I say correcting, I'm talking about you're making sure that, you know, the eyes line up, the, 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 the ears line up, the, the nose or, or the mouth is not crooked and so forth. You, you know, you're making corrections. You're making sure that the, the eyes are evenly spaced, that um, the features are evenly spaced, everything is on the right axis and so forth. And then once you get that and you, you start going into the drawing and developing the drawing, then you get into refining the drawing. But the more effort or the more time you spent in what I'm doing now, which is the preparation, the more, the less correction that you have to do later on. So this is, uh, well, you might, you might say this is all the correcting right here. But, you know, you don't want to get caught up in the drawing later on and then having to work on the values having to work on you know refining the drawing and then seeing after a whole lot of work that you put into the drawing that there's something wrong with it like i said you go down that list whether the 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 the, the axis is off and the lie the, the the eyes are not lining up or the 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 features are not spaced evenly or and, and so forth you know whatever uh whatever corrections that need to be made you don't want to do that while you're well into the development of your drawing you want to do that at the beginning stages so I go through a series of uh, sketching uh, um, opening another and lowering the opacity after I'm finished uh, I'm opening another layer and then going over the, la the, the layer underneath uh, with, with corrections and so forth and then um, merging the layers and then I keep doing that until I arrive at some place where I'm satisfied that I've, I've uh, made all the corrections that I've known to make. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be corrections later on in the drawing. That just meant, meant that you, you tried to head off as many as you can before you start finalizing your drawing. So that's pretty much, that, that's pretty much this stage and where I'm at and what I'm doing. Uh, as far as this drawing is concerned, as the drawing develops, I'm going to be using other the, some of the other brushes. Like I, I use um, for this drawing, I use the pencil brush, of course, which is what I'm using now. And then as I start to lay in the the the, the values of the drawing, I start to use the marker in conjunction with the with the, the eraser because I start to put down the values with the marker and marker brush. And that helps me to put down more broader values, and 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 uh, um, then with the eraser, I come back in, and I I, um, 
I, I uh, lower the the opacity or the strength of the the eraser so that it doesn't erase everything right off, and I can just um, I, I can just go into the, the the values that I placed and and smoothen it out. You know, it doesn't have to be like harsh. You know, so um, and then I go on again to uh, lowering the opacity, opening another layer, and then. Uh, going into that I guess that would be more refinement and and on and on and on until I reach uh, I reach a finish um, and then of course I, I, I um, go back and forth with the pencil brush because I, I want to make it look like a pencil drawing not a marker drawing or or anything like that but uh, I, I wanted to to have the look of a pencil drawing so I go over the whole thing with the pencil and so forth and Continue, like I said, uh, opening layers, uh, um, lowering the opacity of the layer, opening another layer, making, you know, just continue to refine till I get to the point where I want. And that's how I build up this drawing. So right now, at this stage, this is probably uh, my final bit of uh, um, making sure that, that uh, I, I prepared. This is my final bit of preparation for drawing before I start going into the values and so forth. So just, uh, I spent a long time, and I sped up this video, but this is a long time spent on, um, on, on, on just this stage alone. And, and this is where most of the work gets done. Most of the important work gets done here at this stage because it really determines the success of a, a drawing or a painting, whatever you happen to be working on, is how much effort and how much thought you put in the beginning to 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 make sure that the outcome is going to go more smoothly. So that pretty much gives you an idea of my approach to this drawing from here on end. And um, so, as you see, the the drawing develop. Uh, basically, it's on. on all the things that I've talked about uh, in the in the beginning here, uh, but I want to talk about something else. I want to talk about um, the the idea of practicing. Uh, how often an artist needs to practice or should practice, and um, because it's a topic that's come that I've seen a lot of people talk about, and um, I just wanted to give my two cents because I don't always agree with, with everything that's being said. Like I know, um, based on, uh, some experts opinion that, um, it's been going around that if you spend, uh, you need to spend 10,000 hours on whatever it is that you want to get good at before you can see, can consider yourself a master at it or, and, um, it's not something that I kind of agree with. Now, I, I do think that as far as practice is concerned, my uh, opinion has always been that, 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 that an artist or, or whoever you are, whatever you want to get good at, that you need to practice daily. You need to, you need to have a, 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 um, a, a routine or whatever that you, you're doing this on a daily basis. And I know that for a lot of uh, professions, uh, um, that's not unusual. Uh, musicians practice daily. Um, and I've, I've read where um, it had been suggested that the, uh, if you're practicing or learning piano, that you get at least two hours a day on practicing. If you're, uh, I've, I've seen uh, like pro athletes, they work anywhere from 30 to 40 hours a week. And that's, that's pretty much a work day for the average worker. Um, now, whether they're, they're um, doing it the same intensity every day, be, that, that's another thing because I know your body needs to relax at some point. Um, but when, um, when we're talking about uh, um, something like art and it's, it's more of a mental, you know, uh, more of, you know, more of a mental thing, I, I'm not sure if the same rules apply. But... Um, the reason why I don't agree with that 10,000 hours a day because it, it really depends on the intensity of what you're doing and it really depends on what your goals are. Um, like I, I pointed out before, I, I talked about how, I, and I've been pretty open 
um, whenever I talk about my work, about what my struggles are and, you know, how I, I um, had a difficult time with the drawing and so forth. And drawing is not always easy or painting is not always easy. I, that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy it. It just means that, you know what, I, I, I keep striving to, 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 to try and be better at the things that I do. And um, I got a resp I get I get responses back that ask me, well, why struggle? And this one particular person sent me a link to their website where they showed me the where they, 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 they put up their artwork and I looked through it and and, and and the first and second were impressive and then by the time I got to the third and fourth, I realized that this person has been using the same formula to develop their work that it all looks the same. And so, you know what, if you spend 10,000 hours doing the same thing, that's all you're going to get. You know, that doesn't mean that I, I guess you, you mastered something, but it, it's kind of boring to, to do things that way in terms of just, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, not challenging yourself to, 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 to push yourself further to be better better to develop your skills and so forth you know it, it's it's like you're, you're just doing things there's, there's just the sameness to it you know um so you know what the, and then you got to think about what does it mean or what does it involve what does being an artist involve it doesn't just involve drawing and painting um, or sculpting or whatever it is that you do as far as being creative is concerned. You know, I, I, th I think of um, from the time I was a student, I, 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 you know, as far as what art was concerned, it was um, painting, it was making art, you know, um, do, doing some kind of finished work or finished product that, 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 um, that, that's a finished painting. And then there's practicing. Not all the art or all the drawing you do is, 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 is meant to be put under a frame. A lot of it, you know, is, is in a sketchbook. A lot of it is, is, is stuff that we do to practice, to, to, to think about how we're going to do things, to think about how to develop and how to become better so that when we get to doing a, a finished painting, you know, we have all this mileage behind us where we practice uh, um, how to do a certain thing and you know um, there's making art there's practicing there's also looking at art uh, I spend a lot of time I spent a lot of money on books and in, 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 in a lot of time online looking at artwork uh, looking at other artists and, and uh, going to museums going to galleries um, because this is what I like. I like art. I like looking at art. I, I before I started. Well, I don't know. Uh, I was I was a kid when I started drawing, and and sometimes my responses were to uh, the reasons why I wanted to draw or paint was because I saw something that somebody else did. I saw a painting or a drawing that that inspired me, that wanted me to do more, and, and that that's a good thing. You know, and so um, I spend time looking at art. I spend time looking at art because by looking at art, I learn. By looking at art, I, I, I get to see um, people who are interested in the same things that I'm interested in. And, and so I get inspired. I, I You get to feel like, hey, you're not the only one who thinks this way. And, you know, it, 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 it becomes important in your development. Um and then reading about art. I spent a lot of time reading, uh, looking at magazines, articles on, on online, um, books about artists, about um, books, uh, uh, something like a, a book that I recommend um, called The Art Spirit, which is uh, uh, the, just basically uh, the, 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 the classroom lectures of a painter named Robert Henry that was put together by his students. And it's a great book, and, you know, and it was put together during his lifetime, so he got to see it. Um, and, you know, un unlike um, some, other, some other class lectures that are put together after the artist had passed away and so forth. 
But um, you know, I you you spend a lot of time reading about art, and and, and looking at art, and and so forth. So art just doesn't involve a thing that you do, in terms of um, the practice of it. It's it's also um, enjoying it, and enjoying what others do in their art and so forth. Um, and then I, I look at because by reading and by looking at um, other artists, I, I you know you become aware of what they needed to do to get to where they're at, and, and that's who I want to imitate. So if I look at um, look at some illustrators, look at like Andrew Loomis, who was um, pretty famous guy for all the books that he wrote on how to draw and and, and so forth, um, and and things that are uh, reprinted, you know, and and, um, and for a long time they, they were out of print and you paid a lot of money to get these books, but um, they're back in print and the, the, the Loomis books are great, uh, um, great instructional books, uh, but Loomis had, uh, it was his job, he was an illustrator, it was his job to illustrate, to, to, to grow and, and practice his art and so forth. Um, and uh, so he kept a schedule where it was pretty much like anybody else's. He spent eight hours a day at least uh, uh, um, in, in just uh, working on his art. Uh, Rockwell's the same way, kept the schedule. Norman Rockwell, N.C. Wyeth. And N.C. Wyeth, uh, um, uh, he did illustration as well as he, he you know, he, he did fine art paintings and, and also, you know, uh, taught art and was the father of Andrew Wyeth, grandfather of Jamie Wyeth, uh, and so forth. I mean, uh, but you know what? You look at the lives of the painters, you look at lives like uh, Hokusai. Hokusai was, I mean, he his art was what he breathed. Sergeant, Sergeant, uh, uh, same thing. You know, Sergeant Soroya. Soroya, someone had interviewed Soroya, and um, I think he asked him something about how often does he paint, and Soroya says, look, I'm painting all the time. Even as I'm looking at you, I'm painting. You know, even as you're, 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 you're uh, as he was being interviewed, or even as, as, say, you talk to somebody, or you're riding a train, and you're looking around you, you look at the picture possibilities. You paint all the time. You know, and some people, uh, one of the arguments that people had against this is, well, look, I want to have a social life. I, I can't be an artist, you know, all the time, full time and, ha and not have a social life. Uh, but you know what? All these people, all the people that I mentioned, they're professionals. They're illustrators or, or portrait painters and so forth. And they had social lives. They had to have a social life because um, because how else would they get clients? You know, they have to be able to network and, and they, they had families. Uh, um, uh, Rockwell had a family. Loomis had a family. Sar not Sergeant. Sergeant didn't have a family um, uh, apart from his sisters. But he had a lot of friends and, and, and a healthy social life. Soroya had a family, healthy social life. Uh, Hokusai, not so much. But um, that was his personality. But, um, you know, it, it, it's possible to have all of this and have a social life. I mean, we work. Most of our lives are spent working, you know, in, in, in less, less, less of, less, we spend less time at home and more time at work. You know, at least as an artist, you would spend, you know, more time at home, in the, albeit the studio, but hey. You know, um, but anyway, um, you know, it, it's important, it, it, it's important to, 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 um, to realize that it, it's not, it's, it's, it's not something that's so abnormal. It's not something that's so abnormal. It just depends on what your goals are. It depends on, on what you want to be. And you know what? You can say, well, hey, these people are professionals. I, I am not a professional yet. I'm a student. Or you know what I'm, I'm you know or maybe you're just uh, someone who just likes to paint and draw and and that's fine you know but if you are, are looking at it from the point of view of being a serious artist 
even if you're a student okay let me tell you something none of these professionals got to be professionals uh, um, without having a professional attitude beforehand I mean they started acting like professionals before they became professionals they started developing their habits because how could they get so far without being that you know without having those habits or that professional attitude beforehand so all the artists who I mentioned it's like they and you know if you go down the line uh, of um, any artist that you want to pull out who had who had some success in their lives it was because of their professional attitudes beforehand and you know you see this especially in the illustrators who sometimes they got assignments that they didn't want to do but they realized it was a job and they had to turn it in and look like and it looked like they were experts at it or they you know it was something that they really liked to do because they had a professional mindset beforehand you know I, I mean maybe you don't want to be an illustrator maybe you want to be something else uh, and th that's understandable but regardless of what it is you need to be a professional beforehand you know a and it needs you know you need to have so you need to have that discipline you know because why do we see the necessity of discipline in every area but the arts you need to have that same discipline as an artist okay so this is pretty much it this is the end of my video um, and uh, you're gonna see this is gonna be the finished painting thank you so much for uh, for your time thank and for watching my video and if you want to uh, consider um, supporting this channel, you might want to try my Patreon page where I have uh, more videos more uh, um, and also images that I post um, and uh, different things that I give out according to tiers. Everybody gets a sketchbook that I put out on a monthly basis that do, uh, that's basically all the sketches that I've done uh, for that month. Um, as well as um, images and you know some of them that you can download again depending on your tier and um, uh, more um, more uh, uh, what you might more videos uh, tutorial length videos um, that I do in real time as well as some I uh, speed up but um, again uh, thank you uh, consider supporting this channel and I will be back again with another video bye bye